Okay, there's this new black hole theory called quantum information holography. It is by this guy and a choir savant, Jason Padgett. Basically, long story short, he got beat up outside a karaoke bar and then turned into a genius. And on the Today Show, they literally talked about how they tested his brain and he has access to certain parts that a lot of people don't have access to. He can see certain patterns in nature. He had this amazing new gift with math, but it also obviously came with PTSD and a lot of issues. Okay, so I met this genius man. He's a good friend of mine and I never pronounced his name right, sorry. And he gave me some information to share. I'm also linking his TikTok. So today I'm going to tell you why you have actual worlds inside of you that you can learn to access with the help of this black hole theory, quantum information holography. I will be comparing your eye to a droplet of water and a black hole and your brain to the singularity which actually has multiple singularities inside it. Okay, let's go deep dive on black holes. Now I like to mix science with metaphysics just like they did in the olden days. I think we have lost that magic. We need it back. It is all connected. Okay, part one, the black hole song, a story of perfect balance. So in the cosmic tapestry of quantum information holography, black holes are both the eyes and the mouth of the universe, meaning they are guardians of information, the eyes, and they're also the storytellers of existence, the math. Picture, Jason says, picture a black, this is all Jason, by the way. Picture a black hole as an all-seeing eye, absorbing everything that ventures close to it. Light and matter spiral inward, drawn in by an irresistible force. As light approaches, gravity begins to slow time, or what I think has to do with plasma, but that's for another time. And from the observer's point of view, the light seems to freeze on the event horizon, like this. Jason compares it to a record player. He says it's as if the black hole captures and records every single detail, encoding the memory of everything that enters. And within QIH, quantum information holography, Jason explains that light encodes information in its geometry. Basically, the universe is one large plasma fractal. So Jason says that each angle holds data about speed and direction, and its slope reveals velocity and acceleration. So when light nears a black hole, time dilation causes it to stretch and freeze, preserving the information as if it is etched on the event horizon. He says that this frozen state acts as a cosmic memory, an echo of the light's journey. Perse pers I was trying to be cool. It preserves every detail like, like a hologram, which is the whole point of this, on the black hole's surface. Okay, now it starts to get really interesting. The entangled reflections. So quantum information holography reveals that every qubit within the singularity, if we are in some type of spiritual simulation, a qubit has an entangled partner, entangled partner on the event horizon. So one's in there, one's on here. The qubits act as mirrors. One spins up, the other spins down. If one is a zero, the other is a one. This reflection ensures that nothing is lost. The entangled qubits mirror each other creating a holographic record that preserves the universe's history. So even though light and matter vanish into this black hole and the singularity, echoes remain on the outside, maintaining balance where nothing is truly ever lost. Oh, but where's it going? Now it gets really interesting. So the dual perspectives, this part is called, to light or any particle that is falling into the black hole, the journey continues beyond the event horizon entering a new realm or universe. And those of you who are connected with your intuition or meditate, y'all know there's a world beyond this. There's many, but it's almost like if any of you are in touch with your higher selves, they might just be in that singularity as little fairy elves or whatever your culture or societal belief is. There's room for everyone up here. I just personally connect with the fairy elves. That's the thing, everything's a story. I see this this way because of my eye acting as a black hole and what I'm perceiving to be my reality. More on that later. So from this perspective, there is no freezing. There's just a continuous path forward. The event horizon marks the light and particles departure from our universe, becoming a gateway beyond the veil. We are projections of whatever lives here, guys. We're that other qubit, we're that information, and we are learning for them. I know it sounds far out, but I believe it. It resonates with me. I am giving this to whoever wants to believe it. And if you don't, that's fine. But to me, this brings meaning to my life and I truly feel it in my heart and soul. And Jason's proving it with science. 
She can explain way better than me, which is why you should go follow him. So for the outside observer, the black hole acts as a mirror. The light's geometry is imprinted and reflected on the event horizon, creating a holographic memory that endures. This imprint ensures that even though light vanishes to this other world, like they're taking in our information because they're evolving with us, that the informational echo persists. Basically, so we can keep learning for them. We're a family, y'all. The cosmic ocean theory, just Google cosmic ocean back in the day, they were right. Because picture an ocean is a cosmic ocean that reflects like a black hole, but it also has an entire world underneath it with animals, beings, wildlife, and within those worlds, there's other worlds underneath the ocean. I believe the more we apply the metaphor of humanity and nature to the universe, the more we're gonna learn. Know thyself, biatch. So Jason also compared the singularity to a drop of water between two branches. As you look at it, you see the entire forest reflected in this drop, but there's a whole world inside of it. The droplet, like the black hole, captures all the beauty around us and complexity in one drop and reflects that back to us. In quantum information holography, the, sorry, our universe is like this droplet. The event horizon is the droplet reflecting the singularities essence through the cosmos. So we are the essence that the water is reflecting. But then inside this droplet of water, there is shit we cannot see. Sorry for cursing. He says that every action and thought helps shapes our universe, just like the branches as thoughts or actions shape the water droplet. We are always in tandem. It is like a feedback loop. We have meaning. Every single one of us and our perspective has meaning. We are each helping the universe build and grow and evolve. We are each equally important, even though the world is not set up to make us believe that. This is all proving to me that the universe is not indifferent. It is a true being that is learning and experiencing literally through us as individualities of the singularity. We're all reflections, projections of what is in the singularity. I think I just said that. Okay, last part, Jason wrote this, the eternal hologram. This dynamic he speaks of with the reflection, but also the absorption, it speaks of a dynamic duality. From one perspective, the universe consumes light. From another perspective, it preserves it. The event horizon is a boundary that holds the record of every interaction, encoding it geometrically as a hologram. And the echoes, which is us, demonstrate that nothing is ever truly lost Everything is just a part of the universe's memory of the plasma, the Akashic field, etched into the geometry of space-time. And by the way, plasma holds fractals. I basically think that plasma is the framework that makes this entire thing up. And then it's way more than we know, but more about that another time, it's not about me. Almost think of like the blood as fract, like what the, the universe is a being and inside its skin is where the fractals are. And then it's filaments, the blood, is how consciousness travels through it and information back and forth to the black hole. And you might be saying, there's so many black holes. Yes, all black holes are doing this. There's many worlds, it's all creating us. It's just like how we have many atoms or many little black holes, like Nassim Harmin says, I think he's a physicist, how that creates us. There's not just one, just like there's not just one parent for all of us, maybe back in the day, but not now. He then says that the entangled qubits in the singularity and on the holographic screen, us maintain a balance, absorbing and projecting information in a perfect dance. Black hole and its dual nature preserves and reflects, ensuring the universe's song remains intact. This balance becomes the grand hologram, a cosmic melody sung back from the depths forever echoing in the fabric of space and time, plasma. Quickly connecting this to the eye because I ran out of time. Jason kind of says the eye is like the black hole, the singularity is the brain, which has multiple words and well, worlds inside of it. So our eyes reflect and also absorb. We can learn a lot from this comparison, how to live our life and communicate, learn and interact. The world is here for us to learn and experience what we take in with our eyes. It is important to experience it first and then learn. And also remember what you might be projecting out might be clouded by beliefs old belief systems you don't need anymore. Try to meditate a little or do whatever you need to do to connect more with this world. And you might start seeing things a lot differently with a lot more meaning and love and beauty and curiosity. Know that you literally are serving a higher purpose no matter what the heck you do or who the heck you are. We are all equal and we all are one, but also individuals. And it matters for us to be on earth. We're not gonna learn up there. Well, we will, but we're learning here. This is important now. The present is important. Eckhart Tolle was right. This means we have a whole innerverse 
and our singularity, which is our brain. And it's time to go inside more and study more of this, not just what's out there.